Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got a 2016 Heritage Softail up here on the lift, and we are going to remove and reinstall the exhaust on this thing. This is, we're gonna be reinstalling the same exhaust back onto it. I'm really just taking off as part of a different uh, swing arm bearing video that I'm doing, but figured I'd make this little short video for anybody that needs to remove or reinstall their exhaust on their so twin cam Softail for whatever reason. And really, it's pretty much the same procedure for the Evo Softails too. If you, can do, if you can do the twin cam, you'll figure out the Evo. So, let's move in for a closer look. Okay, let's remove the right side floorboard. If you take your floorboard and you flip it up, you're going to see underneath there are two bolts, there and there. This takes a 3 16 Allen wrench and a 7 16 wrench for the nut. I'm using a ratcheting wrench. So in some years these were different front to year, rear, some years they were the same, so keep those bolts in order. Should be able to just hopefully lefty loosey that sucker right off there, relatively easy. There we go. Take your floorboard, lift it up off of there, put it in safe location. You can put your hardware wherever you want. For stuff like this, I like to thread it back into the mount. It keeps which one is which nice and organized, and then I don't have to question it. Very simple, right to the point. Next, let's take the exhaust off of this thing. So in order to do that, first things first, we need to find the O2 sensor plugs and unplug them. Okay, here we are underneath the front of the bike. This is the reg rectifier. This is the right front crash bar. There's this little metal tab right here. And on top of that metal tab was this quick connect, all covered in road grime. It was held in place by this little push tab here. So I took a small screwdriver, pushed the push tab up, and then I was able to get the quick connect uh, down and out of there. So I took a rag, wiped off as much of the crud as I could, and there's a little thumb push in button right here. Hopefully you can see that. We're gonna push that in, and then we're gonna pull the quick connects apart. Now we are gonna clean this really well with contact cleaner and stuff before we put it back together. But in the meantime, this is the wire for the O2 sensor. We're going to pull it up through and out of the way. That way when we pull the head pipe off, it will all come out nice and easily. This right here is the O2 sensor uh, plug. So as you can see, there's a lot of little accessories attached to this thing, and that's fine. Um, we are going to have to disconnect a few things just to get to the plug. Don't worry, it's all almost all on quick connect, so you can't really do it wrong. But we are going to disconnect the negative battery terminal. That way we can get to this little wire here, and then we'll cut some zip ties. To disconnect the battery terminal, you're going to need a 10 that's right, 10 millimeter socket or a Phillips bit. Just connect that right there and you can lay all your accessory wires out of the way. If you have a completely stock motorcycle, you will not have all these accessory wires. But from there, once you move all these extra little accessories out of the way, you should be able to again Press this little button right there, pull it, pops off just like that. Then from there, sometimes you can get the quick connect through there. Today is not that day. It looks like the battery has to come out. So, I forgot what we do with our ratchet. We're going to undo the positive terminal. We always undo that one second. That way no tools land and cross anything. We're gonna take all our little wires and everything and we set them all off the side. Now I took a picture of this with my phone because the owner of this bike has a bunch of accessories on here and I don't wanna forget anything. So I took a picture of how the wires were. Now from here is lifting the battery out. And you would think Harley would give us like a wee little grab handle or something, wouldn't that be sweet? Did they? No. Am I bitter about it? Yes. Go 
Good lord, guys. This is the hardest part. Holy shit! Okay. That was the hardest part of the whole job. All right. Now that the battery is out of the hole, you can take your O2 sensor wire, snake it down through here. It comes out much easier than your battery does. Next, we're gonna to move to the exhaust removal. First, we are going to remove the bracket that holds the muffler and the crossover and the head pipes in place. This is right behind the transmission and right below the passenger pegs. Oh, buddy. 9 16th wrench. Them suckers are tight. Any studs? God, I hope so. Rear head pipe removal, rear head pipe exhaust flange removal. All right, up in here, there are two flange nuts. Sometimes you can get a socket on them. I strongly recommend using a, it's a half inch socket. I strongly, strongly recommend using a quarter inch drive socket because they have the thinnest walls. And that's easiest to get them on there. In this one's case, we're gonna have to take the heat shields loose. It's not a big deal, just an extra step. So, not with that socket, we're not. Take a 5 16 or 8 millimeter socket, because it's the same size, and you can just loosen up the hose clamps that hold the heat shield on there. I'll give them a little room to flex out of the way. Actually, you know what? We're just taking it off. It's easier. Just, and then there's one more hose clamp back here. Once you get them loose, you should be able to spin the hose clamp around. That way it's a little more easily accessible. Then you can lift the hose, the heat shield, hopefully right up off of there. We are going to put some penetrating oil on those things. Use your brand of choice. It all works pretty good. Oh yeah, nice and easy. Or it just broke off. We'll hope it was nice and easy. All right, so I have a swivel here and a really long quarter inch extension. And of course, the quarter inch drive, half inch socket. And we're going to try and snake this up in here and get it up onto the flange nut. This is not really an easy task. Then from there, so you see how I have this all set up there? That's gonna be a key thing uh, you'll have to figure out. 
Try to keep the universal joint as straight as possible, otherwise it binds up on itself and it flops off. Oh, and this one came out fairly easy. All right. So we're just gonna thread this one right on off of there. And then we'll move around to the front head pipe and pull that, pull that nut and flange off. And once that's off, we'll be able to remove the entire exhaust system as one. There we go. Look, the nut even stayed with it. Cool. All right, from here, we can take that same setup. Take the right side nut off of there. All right, make sure that falls all the way to the lift. And then we're going to have to get up in there with the swivel and the drive and everything to get to the lower one. Gonna move that brake line clamp there so I can slide the socket in past the brake line, hopefully. Now, if you have problems with your swivel flopping down and going limp all the time, uh, you can wrap electrical tape around it or see your doctor for special little pills. Trying to hit your fender with scratch paint. Now you should be able to spin that sucker right off of there. Hopefully. Everything is unbolted. We're going to jiggle it a little bit. We're going to make sure the flanges are down off the exhaust studs. I have to get behind him with a screwdriver and give him a little flick. Careful you don't break any cooling fins off doing that. There we are. Just slide those all the way down. Okay, now remember, you have two exhaust sensors here, O2 sensors. You want to be careful because these wires are kind of fragile. So make sure they're already out of the way and kind of laying in a free location. That one's good. Try not to bend them around too much. Now the trick to getting this off is one piece. Where everybody says, dude, my two-in-one head pipe won't come off. Or the crossover keeps from coming off. Yes, it will. There's a wee little bit of clearance right here. Right there. Hopefully you can see that. Right there. So, we're gonna grab the exhaust pipe at the bottom. Let it lean it out some. Jiggle it back and forth a little bit. Comes off just like that. Check it out. Back on, back off. That simple. You try it any other way, it won't come off of there. Now put this in a safe location and make sure it's not laying on the exhaust sensors or on the O2 sensors. So before we reinstall the exhaust, we have to replace the exhaust gaskets. They're like a wire mesh and if you get behind them with like a Harbor Freight pick or like a flathead screwdriver. You should hopefully be able to get behind them. Flick them up there a little bit. And hopefully, grab them a pair of pliers, pull them all out of there. Usually they kind of come out as one. There we go, just like that. Take that, put it someplace important like the trash can. Then get your new exhaust gaskets. Figure out where you put your new exhaust gaskets. There they are.
Take your new exhaust gaskets. Well, first, make sure it's all nice and clean up in here. Take your new exhaust gasket, get it lined up nice and square, and it should slide in there. If it doesn't, don't force it, because you'll distort the gasket. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> Have all your hardware set off to the side and ready. You're going to need it. And from there, uh, try not to stand in front of the camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Slide the head pipe up there through those notches. Get the flanges up in place. And your exhaust is mostly back in place. Now from here, and take a little tension and detail, get the flanges up on there. Don't force it. Kind of spin them around, line them up, and get the nuts on every single one of those things started on before you even consider torquing anything down. Make sure you don't cross thread them. Remember, it's a fine thread. Sometimes the easiest way to get these up on here is with a socket. Just balance them in the end of the socket, or at least the end of the socket extensions. Drop down the floor. This one here is always difficult. There we go. That one's thread up on there. Now before you get too far, remember your O2 sensor wires? Slide those things back into wherever it is they were routed. It's good to do this now, that way if you have to jiggle the pipe around or something to get them past something, it's easy to do. Don't forget about your rear frame bracket mounts here. Thread those on there. Now the saying is with exhaust, you always start at the back and work forward. Uh, because the back tailpipes are what everyone sees. Uh, this is especially true on baggers. We've always seen the guy with the, the crooked muffler pipes on his bagger. Nobody wants to be that dude. So there's not a lot of wiggle room or adjustment in these. get up in here with your quarter inch drive half inch socket and your swivel tighten each one of those up snug them both up tighten them up torque them spec and go back and torque them again same torque spec the idea is since it's a two bolt flange you'll kind of rock back and forth before it seats down on there once the back one's done, move to the front one, or vice versa. And then, of course, after about 100 miles or so, you're going to want to put a wrench, a socket wrench on there again and uh, just give them a little bit of a twist and see if they move. Sometimes, once you get a bunch of heat in the gasket, it all compresses a little bit. Um, yeah, and uh, listen for uh, exhaust leaks. You'll probably be able to hear them, or you'll be able to stick your hand in here when you first start it up. And uh, if there's an exhaust leak, you should feel a whole bunch of hot air going out there. 